All right, in this video, I'm going to discuss the definition of equilibrium temperature and why it occurs, why it's considered an equilibrium, and uh, a brief overview of how we could actually go about finding it. So equilibrium temperature is when we take two different substances, we put them together, and we see what temperature they come to over time. We're, when we're doing this, we're usually going to assume that we have a closed system, and that means that energy isn't leaking out to the environment at all times. If that's the case, then the two substances are eventually going to come to the temperature of whatever the environment is, and it's not really necessarily that interesting. So what we're imagining here is in some sort of calorimeter, some sort of closed, isolated system, we take two things that are different temperatures, and we put them together, and we see what temperature they eventually tend towards. So to understand why they are going to come to one common temperature, it's important to understand how heat is being transferred between the two substances and also the definition of temperature in the first place. Remember that temperature refers to the average speed of the particles, and heat is being transferred between particles due to collisions. So if we have a particle, let's call him A, and we have another particle, and let's call him B, if we say that A's the temperature of A is greater than the temperature of B, then these two particles are both zooming around, but what we assume is that on average, the particles of A are traveling faster than the particles of B. That's why I gave A a little bit of a bigger line. When these two things collide with each other, then there's a chance that some of the energy may go from A to B, as in B might fly away faster than it was in the first place, and A might fly away a little bit slower. That's not the only thing that can happen. What can also happen is that energy could go from B to A, which would slow, which would make slower, or B slower, and A even faster. So technically energy could go in either direction in this collision. When we're thinking about particles making up a bulk material, though, we have to remember there are billions and billions and billions of these things, more than that, really. I'm just, you know, there's more than you can imagine. So it's not really important what happens in an individual collision. It's important what's more likely. And I think with common sense, we can imagine that it's more likely that energy will be transferred from the fast to the slow. or effectively from the hot to the cold. What that means then is that in general, the hot object is cooling off. And the cold object is gaining heat. or warming up. So because this process is a little bit more likely than this process, heat is a little bit more likely to go from the fast objects, the hot objects, to the slow objects, the cold objects. And so the temperatures tends to flow, or the energy tends to flow from the hot to the cold, bringing the two, two temperatures together. Now it's called an equilibrium, well, so what will eventually happen when this happens is that the temperature of the hot object will come down and the temperature of the cold object will come up until they reach the same temperature. This does not mean that in every collision between the two different types of materials, the hot object gets colder and the cold object gets hotter. In fact, sometimes it does go the other way around. But we'll, because there are so many particles, all we observe is the average effect. And so since the one transfer is more likely, that's what we see as the average effect that's happening. And so on average, over time, the two things will come to the same temperature. This is called the equilibrium temperature.
called an equilibrium temperature because exchange of heat does continue to happen. So sometimes some particles of substance A get banged around and go faster. Sometimes they get banged around and they go slower. But what an equilibrium means is that the heat in is equal to the heat out. And so the average temperature, average temp, becomes constant. So we might, so that's why things come to equilibrium temperatures. We might think that if I have some substance and it starts at let's say zero degrees C and I have some other substance that starts at 100 degrees C, the equilibrium temperature when these two things came together would be 50 degrees C. And that makes some sort of sense, but that's really only taking into account the temperature. What we have to remember when we studied heat and discussed the difference between heat and temperature is that heat depends on a bunch of things. It depends on how much of the substance you have, the specific heat capacity of the substance, Remember, this is how much energy the material requires. To change temperature. And on the actual amount of temperature change. So A and B, one at zero degrees and one at 100 degrees Celsius, well, there might be a lot more of the zero degree stuff than there is of the 100 degree stuff. So it wouldn't come to 50 degrees in the middle. It would come somewhere closer to the zero degree since there was more of it. Not only that, but it might depend on how much uh, or what type of materials were used because some types of materials like water require a lot more energy to change their temperature than some substances like iron. So what we do here, if we want to predict an equilibrium temperature, is we recognize that as one substance gains heat from the other substance, that's going to be the same amount of heat that the other substances lose. So if we take into account the mass, the specific heat capacity, and the temperature change of one substance, and the negative, well, the mass, the specific heat, and the negative temperature change of the other substance, when we take all three factors into account, these two things must be equal. Then what we can do is we can recognize that delta T is equal to T2 minus T1, and recognizing that both substances have to come to the same final temperature, we can call that T, or the equilibrium temperature, And we can, in general, get an equation where if we know how much the type in the initial temperature of the two things, we can solve for the equilibrium temperature as the only unknown. So particles are always in motion. That motion I, or the speed of that motion is represented by their temperature. If particles at different temperature come into contact with each other, those collisions lead to energy being transferred in general from the faster particles to the slower particles, causing the hot stuff to become a little colder and the cold stuff to become a little hotter. And eventually that means that both substances that are in contact will tend towards the same equilibrium temperature where energy is being transferred at a rate out and in that is the same. So it's not losing or gaining heat, it becomes stable. To figure out what that temperature is, we can't simply look at the original temperatures, but we must also take into account the mass and specific heat capacities 
of the individual substances.